What do the Kurds do now? Hiwa Schwan, Kurdish American. Hiwa, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Stan. But first, I want to really thank your show for bringing up this important issue and bringing authentic stories to the people to educate the American people. It's very important. So thank you so, so much for that. We're really glad to have you because I, I don't understand this. I've talked to a lot of my friends. We don't understand what's happening you know, with the Kurds. I mean, I can understand how a, a Kurdish Americans now would want to help out uh, their fellow Kurds. Yes. Maybe we should start with what are, who are the Kurds? What are they? Yes, of course. Uh, the Kurds are uh, an Indo-European uh, people who live in that region, in the Middle East, in the Zagros Mountains, for thousands of years. The Kurds are, in their, by their nature, they are freedom-loving, and they want to live freely, just like the Americans do. But unfortunately, after World War I, Kurdistan was divided between several countries in the region, and each country wants to dominate the Kurds, which is really hard for the Kurds, because the Kurds are, by nature, freedom-lovers, and they live by the creed, uh, live free or die. And therefore, they cannot accept dominance by foreigners. And this is the reason that we hear about all these conflicts in Turkey, in Iraq, in Iran, and Syria. Well, the Turks call the Kurds terrorists. Well, that's truly uh, not true, and everybody knows that, because the Kurds cannot be, 30, uh, 20 million Kurds in Turkey cannot be terrorists. Until recently, the, the Turks did not even confess that there are Kurds in Turkey. They were calling them Mountain Turks. And that led to a lot of uh, discrimination and persecution on the uh, ethnic basis. So the Kurds fought for their rights, for their national rights, to be able to speak Kurdish and to uh, practice their culture. So and, what did the Kurds do to make the Turks so angry at them? Well, the Kurds, uh, after being subject to uh, so much uh, persecution, thousands have been killed and imprisoned, they had to do something to gain their freedom. So they took up arms, and that's the reason they call them terrorists, because they took up arms to fight for their rights. Because truly, there is no true democracy in that region, in Turkey or Iraq or Iran. And so... There, uh, although I don't personally believe in armed conflict, but that's what people saw as their only option because the uh, global powers did not really care about the right of the Kurds for their own country. The Kurds originally were uh, from Zoroastrian uh, religion, so that's still really very uh, obvious in the Kurdish culture and in the Kurdish character. That's why the Kurds are different from the rest of the Muslims in the region. They're more tolerant. They accept other uh, ethnicities and other religions uh, uh, openly. They actually, right now, the Kurds are the only people who protect the minority Christians, the, uh, uh, the uh, Yazidis, and the Jews, and the other minorities who live in Kurdistan region. They protect those groups, especially in Syria and Iraq. Where are you from? I was born in Kurdistan of Iraq years ago. <laughs> and uh, migrated to the U.S. Do you, do you still have family in that area? I still have family in that region. And, and that's why we, most Kurds are connected to the Kurdistan because of family relationships and because we, we, are still, uh, we still love our roots and we still care about the people who live there. As a Kurdish American, we have to really care about them, especially if there's so much injustice going on. What I'm trying to figure out is who's on what side over there? Turkey, Syria, Russia, the Kurds, the U.S.? Well, to simplify things, uh, Kurds in every country are rising up because they, because they want their rights. So in Turkey, the Kurds are uh, trying to get their rights uh, and to get some kind of uh, you know, freedom for their culture and for their uh, people. In Iraq, it's the same thing. They have a little more freedom because of what happened in 2003 and the uh, no-fly zone that created Kurdistan regional government. Mm -hmm. In Syria, this new opportunity that came up after uh, the uprising in Syria, uh, the, the Kurds have gained some control of their own territory. And now so Turkey says that this, this could be a threat because they could be helping the Kurds in Turkey. 
although there's no real truth to that because the Kurds in each country, they want to stay within their uh, borders. They want to live in peace with the rest of the region, but they want their own uh, self-control and self-rule. They want freedom because the Kurds have lived in their own country and they have their own culture and language for thousands of years. So naturally they have the right to, to have their own uh, rule, their own state, their own government. Uh, most of the Kurds ask for some kind of federal style of government with some democracy. And that's basically what they want. But most of the countries in that region, as we all know, are dictatorships. And they don't believe in that kind of freedom and democracy. What does Turkey want, not just about the Kurds, but overall? Uh, well, we think, we believe, and from what we have seen so far, is that Turkey wants to revive the Ottoman Empire, the glory of those days that they controlled uh, most of the Middle East and some parts of uh, Europe. And, of course, the Kurds are seen as an obstacle to expansion and to their own uh, control. So that's part of the conflict. They don't believe that there are Kurds or other minorities, for that matter, in Turkey. They only believe that everybody's Turk. And if you say, I'm a Kurd, you've gone into the jail. Even people right. who are actually uh, elected democratically to, to represent their, their districts and their people, they were put in jail after saying, we are, we are Kurds. We are, you know, we, we are Turkish citizens, but we are actually Kurds. They were put in jail for just saying that. They said, well, you believe in separatism, or you believe in this and that. So it's obvious, you know, they just don't want anybody except for Turks and for, except for their own rule. So what did you feel when Erdogan was invited to the White House? It was truly disappointing to most Americans, including, of course, the Kurds. Because after what ha has happened in You're Syria... You're really being nice. Disappointing is... It was really heartbreaking. It was, uh, it was very difficult to see somebody who just recently ordered the killing of so many civilians and innocent people and poking their finger at, at our democracy and our government and to come to be uh, welcomed and red carpet rolled out to them, it's to, to me, it's really, uh, uh, it was difficult. You talked a little bit about the no-fly zone before. Yes. Um, and that started, I think, in 2003. At the time, were, were the Kurds mostly in control of the oil in that area? In Syria, I don't know exactly the, uh, the, uh, the, the nature of the, uh, the control over the oil. But in Kurdistan, it, of course, they have control over their oil in their region right now. And so that's partly supporting their government uh, or their regional government mm -hmm. and helping their economy. So is that what the Kurds do for a living? They take care of the oil? Uh, well, Kurdistan mm -hmm. by nature is not, uh, really has not depended on oil for a living. Uh, the, the life in, in Kurdistan have continued for thousands of years sustainably by agriculture and taking care of the land and, and uh, animals. But that's also declining because of the, uh, all these violence and wars and destroying villages by Iraqis and Turks and Syrians. That's, you know, people had to flee to cities and depend on the economy in the cities. And the economy in the cities is some commerce and oil is becoming increasingly part of that economy. So whose side is Iraq on? Well, Iraq is, is a really uh, a, a, a complicated situation where many countries are influenced in the situation inside Iraq. Iran, for sure, Saudi Arabia, and Turkey. And of course, the Kurds are caught between these uh, warring f factions or sides. I'm trying to figure out who's on what side of anybody. It's, right it's not easy. Uh, it takes a long time to di analyze and digest that. But simply said, Every country in the region wants control over the situation in Iraq, especially Iran, because of the Shia majority in Iraq. They want to control the government in Iraq, and they don't want Americans and other Europeans have any say in that region. Because the West is uh, supporting the Kurds in Iraq, they don't like the West. And in fact, the Kurds are accused of being a, a very close friend and ally of the West, so the people in the region, they don't like the Kurds very much because of that reason. Although the, the West keeps betraying the Kurds, 
but the Kurds keep hanging on to the West because they hope for democracy, for freedom in the future. Yeah, this last time when the U.S. withdrew troops from the area, it wasn't the first time that we had betrayed you. Yes, uh, that's true. Uh, it doesn't know, make it good. I'm just saying. An article by John Schwartz in the, uh, one of the online magazines, uh, Intercept, I think, uh, discusses the eight times that the U.S. has uh, betrayed the Kurds, which is really heartbreaking to read because some of those betrayals affected my family and my life personally. I didn't even know some of those. But after I read that, I was really shocked by how could a country that is the leader of democracy in the free world do such a thing? Uh, and I think, you know, I hope that philosophy or that misguided policy will stop and uh, we can help the Kurds to build their country and become our only ally besides Israel in the region, truly. The Kurds are the only true ally of the West and especially America in that region. So Saudi Arabia is not a true ally? No, none of those folks have proven, they have proven that they're not true allies. The what Kurds have proven that? time and again. I mean that they're after their own interest only. They, they will use the U.S. to protect their interests, but not to help the U.S. Are we any different here in the U.S.? Are we out after our own interest and our own inter interest seems to be protecting the oil? Well, that seems to be the, that seems to be the, the uh, reason behind our motives, but unfortunately that shouldn't be our guiding principle because people look at the U.S. as a leader of democracy in the world and especially the Kurds are like a, a drowning person who is looking for a hand to rescue them. So they always reach their hands to, to hang, hang on to the West for freedom. The Turks essentially want the Kurds gone. What does Syria want? The Syria is a dictatorship that people have risen to get rid of it and build a new democracy. And yeah, you've you got it. the government of Syria and then you have the people and they're two different things, yes. right? Yes, the government of Syria is a dictatorship that's been there for 30 or 40 years now and people want to change, naturally. But, you know, Russia unfortunately supported that dictator and kept it in power and U.S. back down and backed up and backed and withdrew so they left the people to the mercy of a dictator. And the Kurds, although they're you know, freedom fighters and they are strong, but without true support of their allies they, and without you know, the weapons and support, they're not gonna be able to, to uh, fight uh, the, the Syrian regime or the ISIS for that matter. Is there a difference between the Turks and uh, ISIS? In the point of view of the Kurds, they are not different because they're both killing Kurds, innocent Kurds. In the point of view of the international uh, media and international global powers, they are different. But truly, uh, if you are killing innocent people, no matter what you, they call you, you are not a democracy. Did the United States allow the killing of innocent people? Obviously, this last uh, move by the U.S. by withdrawing support for the Kurds, our allies in Syria, led to that, unfortunately. Are we still friends? The Kurds are very loyal people by nature. Once they are friends, they will stay friends forever. In fact, the Kurds have helped the U.S. Uh, finding uh, al-Baghdadi even after the betrayal. They kept helping the U.S. forces there, and they still do. I don't know that I would feel that same way if I were Kurdish. When you don't have a lot of uh, choices and options, you hang on to one hope that someday you know, the West and the US especially will see the light and do the right thing by helping the Kurds gain their deserved, much deserved democracy and freedom. After all, they are the people who helped us in many situations. They helped our interests, our national security by fighting terrorists. Uh, so they deserve, truly they deserve uh, our support in helping them build their own country and be free from all these persecution around them. You use we and they kind of interchangeably. Yes. Um, do you feel like that you, you yourself are more American than Kurdish now or does that, or are you both? I lived most of my life in America, so I feel American first, but I also have roots in 
Kurdistan and I feel a Kurdish uh, blood in me uh, that's natural and stays there. And as an American that knows the situation firsthand, of course, I feel strongly about the situation in that region and in Kurdistan. And I hope that my country, Kurd uh, USA, will support my original country, Kurdistan. What I'm trying to find out is why are the Kurds so dangerous to Turkey, um, Syria, Iran, Iraq, Iraq. Iraq Russia? Yeah, they are not truly dangerous. The Kurds are very peaceful people. They respect their neighbors. They respect minorities. They protect minorities in every country. They, they uh, are very open-minded, very uh, uh, plur pluralistic society. They are kind of forced to fight for their freedom. The Kurds by nature are freedom lovers, like I said, and they do not accept foreign control of their country and their culture and their language. Mm -hmm. They simply want their basic human rights, which is practice of your language, of your culture, of your religion, whatever culture you have, and not have people sent from central governments to rule you with no connection with the local community. I want to ask where do they get their weapons, but I'm not going to, because I don't want to put you on the spot. I have no idea, honestly, who gives whom weapons, but it's all manufactured in the West. <laughs> all I know. Well, that was pretty easy, yes. <laughs> considering we are the number one arms dealer in the world. If you were to draw a map of Kurdistan, what would it look like? Well, it, it will encompass the Kurdish areas in Iraq, in uh, Iran. And that's in northern? In northern, northern Iraq, Iraq uh, western Iran, uh, southeastern of Turkey, northeastern of Syria, all the way to the Mediterranean ports. Uh, you know, the map of Kurdistan now is well known on Google. The majority, where the Kurds are majority, that's what they want, where they want to live and, and control their own affairs. How has life been for the Kurds generally after the fall of uh, Saddam Hussein? In Iraq, it's been much better than other parts of, the, uh, of Kurdistan. Uh, however, it's been hard also because of the rise of ISIS and their, the Kurds' involvement in fighting ISIS in Iraq. They have lost a lot of uh, fighters in those fights. So it's, it's been good in one way that we ha the Kurds have some freedom to have their own parliament and to rule themselves, kind of free from uh, control of Iraq. But because of the oil budget is controlled by Iraq, they use that as a leverage to control the Kurds. And so they, recently they closed the airports in Kurdistan and they stopped all the international traffic to Kurdistan so they could do that. Internationally, they still believe Iraq is the controlling power of Kurdistan, which is truly unfortunate because Kurdistan is the only place where Americans can live and shop freely without weapons. That's the only place in the Middle East they feel completely safe. There has been no death of Americans in Kurdistan er, through all these years of operations, which means the Kurds really love and care about the Americans. Uh, there's an article in Time <clears throat> calling them the forever refugees, referring to the Kurds. And um, the quote is, uh, no friends but the mountains. And the question is, is what does life look like for the Kurds of Syria now that the U.S. has pulled back? Well, most of them have lost their homes and their livelihood. And a lot of them have gone into uh, refugee camps in, Kur in Iraqi Kurdistan because they're always welcome in the, in the Kurdish areas. Uh, this yeah, is but they're still the refugee camps. Yes, you refugee can't. camps, very harsh life. Uh, unfortunately, Kurds have to deal with this kind of unfortunate situation because they're, you know, they do not give them the right to have their own state. Once you have your own state, then you don't have to become a refugee in your own country. You know, this is probably an awful question, but with all of the mess that's going on in the Middle East, if you had territory outside them in the Middle East, let's say in the middle of Nebraska, for example, yeah. would you adopt that as Kurdistan? Well, it's, it's, it's not a bad idea. However, it's not easy logistically to get every Kurd out of Kurdistan because there are 30 plus million Kurds in Kurdistan. And so it's not logistically possible. But the Kurds have really dreamed of a place like that. Even 
one of the Kurdish leaders, Barzani, he said, you know, we are happy to become the 51st state of America if you let us still be free. They, they went that far of, of wanting to be part of America. Even, even after the, the pullback? He's still willing to, to do that? Right now? Uh, I don't know uh, yeah. how they feel right now. I'm sure they feel totally betrayed. But they still are willing, I'm sure, to work with the U.S. The Kurds in Iraq especially are uh, strong allies of, of USA, and they want to continue working with them to hopefully, eventually, the U.S. will support their independence. President Trump recently said Erdogan has a great relationship with the Kurds. And at the same time, Turkey bought a, uh, a Russian weapon system. Who are they going to fight with that? Seems like they're going to fight the Kurds. I don't, uh, that's, uh, can, that cannot be uh, farthest from the truth. Uh, the Kurds, uh, 30 million of them are fighting for their freedom in Turkey. There's no freedom in Turkey for the Kurds. So the Kurds are not uh, friends of, of Erdogan. There are groups who are bought uh, and they are used against other Kurds. Uh, that they could be considered their friends, but truly the whole na uh, Kurdish nation are not friends. I mean, they, they would be friends if they treat them humanely, if they treat them right, if they respect their uh, human rights, if they let, the, leave them, let them live freely in their own uh, territory, but they are not. So how could you be free, uh, friends with somebody who is killing you? You know, what I'm hearing be described and what I'm reading in articles from others is that this basically is genocide. It's truly genocide because they have uh, cleared like 20 kilometers uh, wide and 300 miles long and that's a whole country to, to cleanse from the people who live there and bring your own people. That's truly considered uh, ethnic cleansing and uh, genocide. Now was that Syria who did that or Turkey? Or? The Tur Turkey ordered the Kurds to be clearing 20 kilometers from the Turkish border. Nobody should live there. And that's huge territory that people depend on. And that's part of Kurdistan. But there's Kurds living in Turkey though, right? Yeah, yes. Well, the, both parts of Kurdistan are one, except for this imaginary line that was drawn by, uh, by the Allies after World War I, which is the, the root of the Kurdish problem. Uh, the Kurds were promised to have their own ho homeland. The Armenians were promised to have their own homeland, and they did, but they did not carry out the, the part about the Kurds because the Turks were uh, tough and they fought the, back and they said, you know, these are our people and we will take care of them. You don't have to worry about them. But eventually the West forgot about the Kurds because oil was discovered in the region in the 20s. So are the Turks mad at the Kurds because the Kurds helped out the Armenians at a time when Turkey was trying to eradicate the Armenians at the same time? No, like I said, the, the Turks don't like the Kurds because the Kurds want some kind of freedom and independence, naturally. And they don't believe that there are any ethnic minorities in Turkey. Now they say, well, there are some Kurds, but they are really not good people. And they call them terrorists. And we, because of our interest in the region, we agree with them, unfortunately. But the Kurds in Iraq are good people because we, are against, we were against the Iraqi regime and the Kurds were our friends. So there's this dichotomy. Um, there's another article in The Nation and it's uh, Turkey's other weapon against the Kurds, water. What is that all about? Well, the two great rivers of Mesopotamia, they, they flow from uh, the Kurdish, Kurdistan mountains in Turkey. And Turkey uses that to control the situation in Iraq and Syria. And of course, it affects the Kurds in that region and all the people who live on those rivers. So that's becoming a very uh, big international and global issue. As you know, water resources are dwindling because of climate change and water becoming actually more important than oil in, in the near future. And mm -hmm. So Turkey starving the Kurdish regions of, uh, from water? I don't know the details of that, but they do use it, including Iran, uses water against the Kurds whenever they want to. Oh my gosh. Many Americans want the, and I'm one of them, want the, want the U.S. 
out of the Middle East. What should the United States do? Should the United States go back into the Middle East with a full military force? Well, we have left a lot of issues in the Middle East. As, as you know, after World War I, we divided this region by countries artificially. Mm -hmm. So that caused a lot of problems. And unless we resolve those problems and let people have their rights, we are not going to be finished with problems in that region. Who can be involved in that? Uh, the, the powers to be, because they have done that. They have Isn't that what they did, though, in the Treaty of Versailles and, and uh, the resolution of World War I, the powers that be got together and wielded their power. Exactly. And didn't involve the people who were being impacted. Yes, and that's what we are dealing with right now. We have left with this mess of artificial countries. People cannot live together peacefully because of all the differences and all the persecutions that they went through. They want to live freely. And without a resolution for that, you really cannot leave. Because if you leave, you, then you have ISIS and other sorts of uh, terrorist organizations controlling the region if you leave a vacuum. And so this is not going to go away. If you want national security, if you want peace, if you want commerce and mar free markets in the region, you need to help the people build free societies because we have left them without one. So we need to really stay and be strong and help the people, like the Kurds, have their own state so they can be our allies in fighting terrorism. We're getting to the end of our time, and I've got two questions. Yes. One, what do the Kurds want from the U.S.? And two, what do they expect? The Kurds want uh, complete support for their independence, and that's really every Kurd's dream because they've been persecuted for at least 100 years now since World War I. And it's time for them to have their own country just like everybody else. If, if Kuwait, Kosovo, and Armenia can become a country, why not Kurdistan with the size of France and the population of uh, many countries, 30 million plus, why not let them have their own state? What they expect is really just to let them, help them out to, to fight terrorism, to, uh, you know, to, to keep their freedom, and to build their economy eventually. That's what they hope and expect from the West, especially from USA. Hey, Wishwan, thank you very much for being with us. Thank you for having me.